In this lesson, I'll show you five cool blues riffs that you need to know. Plus, we'll take each of them through a 12 bar blues progression. Here's the first. <laughs> This one is an upbeat riff based on a shuffle rhythm and it's perfect for that Chicago style jam. That's the first measure and once you get that down you pretty much have what you need to be able to play this throughout an entire 12 bar blues. We start out on the G note 6 string, this is in the key of G so I'm at the 3rd fret. And then I'm skipping over the fifth string and up to the fourth string at the fifth fret for the octave, G. And we're gonna pump that twice as well. So, so far we have one, two, and. All right, then we drop down on the fourth string to the third fret, play that twice. That's the flat seven. If you're familiar with the minor pentatonic scale, it's there, or even the blues scale, minor blues scale, it's there as well. But now we've got one more beat to contend with, beat four, and we're gonna play a triplet there. And we're gonna climb up the frets, starting with the third fret on the fifth string, fourth fret, that's that blue note from the blues scale, and then up to the fifth fret, all right? Now think about this more as a fingering pattern rather than the fret numbers. That's going to allow you to move it anywhere next. We're not going there, but just wanted to illustrate you could move this anywhere if you really think about this more as a pattern. Where we are going is up a string set. We're going to move everything that we just did up to the fifth string and then the fourth and the third string. So the same pattern holds. We're just doing it up a string set. And when I say up, I'm meaning up in pitch. So we're moving that way, a string set. All right. And then, of course, as the 12 bar blues progression comes back around, we go back to G. And then here, when it's time to go to our five chord, that's D, we're going to slide up. So we're going to hit this note twice in a row, but we're going to use that same pattern. Then drop down back to C. And that was all from the fifth string root. A couple of important things that I want you to keep your mind on as you're working your way through this pattern. We got to talk about the shuffle, that bounce rhythm, and then we've also got to talk about how you can pick that triplet. Now, the rhythm that we're playing this riff to has swung eighth notes. So the eighth notes are actually pushed. They're not evenly spaced, which would be straight time like this. One and two. Right? They're swung, they're pushed a little bit closer to the next beat. In the blues, often we have the triplet feel of a swing. And that really gives the bounce to this part. And we need to carry that over through a lot of the other riffs that we're going to cover as well. Also, let's talk about the picking. We can play this really anyway. I like to pick down strokes until I get to the triplet, which I'm going to pick down, up, down, right? That gives me the speed that I need there. Now, if I'm having fun, I might put some upstrokes in different spots there. It will help me accent things and help it sound a little bit different. Really find your own taste there. I'm playing this part at 120 beats per minute, which can be a bit quick, especially for that triplet. And if this is out of reach for you right now, then hop over to the lesson page. I've prepared drum loops at three different tempos for each of the riffs in this lesson so that you can practice on your own. Plus, while you're there, sign up for the Tuesday Blues email list to get additional lesson materials emailed to you every single week. Now, let's head south to Texas for the next riff.
Fate by SRV is one of my favorite tunes, but it is not easy. Playing the rhythmic upstroke while keeping that boogie going is tough. We're going to simplify the Pride and Joy style riff here, but we're going to keep it snappy. Feel free to add a little bit more of that Texas swagger later, but right now, let's just jump into this one. Now this Texas style line is an embellishment of the basic boogie line, this. different ways. In the first measure, what we're going to do to embellish that is climb up the sixth string. Rather than going straight to the G sharp, we're going to throw the G in there to create a little bit of movement. First, we're going to start with a couple of open six strings, and then there's that climb. Listen to the difference. Or it just creates that little movement. And then once we get to the B, we're going to hit it twice and then up to the C sharp and then back. It creates a little bit of a swing as well in the melody. We're already doing something which we're going to talk about in a second to swing the rhythm. This kind of helps match it, right? Going somewhere and coming back. And then the second half of this is really cool. We're going to play the E, this time on the fourth string, second fret, and then play that same walk up on the sixth string and match it with our B to C sharp move. So the entire two bar riff sounds like this. And we'll repeat that just moving through the 12 bar blues. So we do that again over E and then move to A. And just like we did with the previous example to move into A, we're just going to make A the lowest note and keep the pattern the same. Everything is now relative to this open fifth string instead of the open sixth string. Everything just moves up a string. And again, up is going up in pitch, but down toward the floor, right? And then we have one more little quirk to contend with, and that's when we hit the five chord. The pattern is going to look a little bit different, although it's really the same melodically. We're going to hit the B, but then we've got to climb up the fretboard. We're going to go up to the fifth fret and the sixth for our walk up. So, and then back to the fourth and then up to the sixth. And we're going to do the same thing over A, which is really the first half of the regular A measure, but we've just got a half the space here to contend with. So that's how we go up to our five chord and then down to our four chord. And then of course we go back to our boogie here. All right, now I like to get in this swing move here when I'm picking this. So I want to do a lot of down up. You could definitely palm mute and go through this whole thing with down strokes, and that can be really cool as a verse or something a little bit quieter. But to really get this to pop, I like to go down and then up. in some choppy notes here and there to really make it stand out. So it's really a pretty strong upstroke. The first two examples have that triplet feel, but the next example changes the rhythm up a lot. <laughs> Let's dig into this fantastic example of a rumba blues. This riff is from Albert King's classic Crosscut Saw, and it has a unique syncopated rhythm accenting the and of beat two, like in the Latin rumba. And it can be tricky until you lock in with that groove. Once it hits you, it's a ton of fun to play. So let's check it out on the guitar.
There are only five notes in each measure of this riff, but this is all about the timing. Before we get to the timing, let's talk about the notes. We're going to play this in the key of A, so I'm playing the sixth string, fifth fret, and then I'm coming up to the C sharp. That's the major third of A, and that's at the ninth fret, same string. And then up to the fifth, which is the seventh fret, and that's an E note, and then the major sixth. So that's the perfect fifth, and the major sixth is F sharp at the ninth fret. So all I'm going to do is play the A, the C sharp, the E, the F sharp, and then back. So the interval names for that, the root, the major third, the perfect fifth, the major sixth, and the perfect fifth, right? So we've got to place this in time. Those five notes sound really good, but they sound really good when we put them to that blues rumba. So we're going to play on the downbeat. That's B1. And then we're going to wait because beat two is rolling around, but we're not going to play on top of beat two, which might be your natural tendency to kind of stay in rhythm here. But we're going to wait and play the C sharp on the and of two, hold it through to the top of beat three, and then on the and of three, switch to this with eighth notes. All right, so let me play along and count it. We've got one, two, and three, and four, and 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 And be sure to put those rests. When you see me coming down on the guitar, that's stopping all the notes. Those rests really give this chance, or give this part a chance to breathe. All right, once we have that pattern, we work it through the 12 bar blues just like we've been doing before. We can move up to the D chord and just shift everything up again toward the floor. A string set. Back to A. And then E, which everything just comes up, right? We do the same thing that we did over D, it just comes up. Up next is a fast paced riff from Hubert Sumlin of Hallam Wolf's band from the track Killing Floor. Let's check this one out. Yep, there's some quick picking in there and I'm gonna give you a tip on how to modify in just a bit. But first, keep this in mind. Just because I'm playing this at 120 beats per minute doesn't mean that that's the right tempo for you. If you're stumbling through the strings, slow things down and aim for good, clean playing over speed. Speed will come later through focused practice and don't forget that I've got those slower tempo drum loops that you can check out on the lesson page. But right now, let's dig into the notes. the busiest rhythm that we've encountered so far, but the good news is once you get that one measure down, we move it around through the 12 bar blues pattern just like we've been able to do in the examples so far. So let's dive into the pattern. We're going to play this in the key of A, so I'm at the fifth fret on the sixth string. And notice that I'm playing that with my middle finger this time rather than my index finger. That's because I'm not reaching up to play my next note. I'm going to go up a string to the fifth string and down a fret to the fourth fret. Now that happens to be the same note that we encountered in our rumba, right? And we could have played the rumba like this. Same notes, but we chose to play it this way. You've got options when you're playing the guitar. So what we're gonna do here for Killing Floor is play this. So that's our A and then the C sharp. Then we come up to the D and we do 16th notes. So we're picking you know, pretty quickly here and I wanna do this with down up, down up, right? To make sure that I've got time to do it. Um, it's, it's easier to do alternate picking than, right? 
we can get that going and then we're going to finish off this measure just by walking up through the rest of the what happens to be the blue scale that blue note the flat five up to the five let's slow it down one and two and three and a four and one and two and three and a four and notice this has a straight time feel we move it What we did at the end of this to change things up as we moved to bar 12 was just play an E7 chord here and just kind of really dial into this real upbeat rhythm that we've got going here. What a riff, I love this one. And if you find those 16th notes a bit too quick, then try playing it as two 16th notes followed by an eighth note. That's gonna to work too, and you could even just play two eighth notes there. And really any of these riffs can be tweaked to suit your level or your taste. But let's dive into number five here. This one is a bit different and it's a whole lot of fun. The four examples that we've covered already are very pattern based, which is great because you can easily move them into any key. You change where the pattern starts and you change the key. But this one is definitely different. We have a riff that starts as one thing and as we move through the bars, it ends up kind of answering itself and morphing into something else. I absolutely love this one. And there's also something else to keep in mind with this tune. When we put it through a 12 bar blues, we stay on the one chord for eight bars. We don't go to the four chord in bar five like we normally do, but then we get back on track and play through the 12 bar blues as normal. That makes this one really interesting to me and a whole lot of fun. So let's check it out. Now, unlike the other riffs that we've covered, which basically are patterns that you can move through the entire 12 bar blues progression, more or less, this is one riff and it changes forms a little bit as we move through the progression. And also what's different about this is, yes, it's a 12 bar blues, but eight of the bars are on the one chord and then we move through the blues progression, the rest of the blues progression. So it kind of emits that first uh, time you go to your full chord. Great riff. So let's unpack it. We've got our C sharp here, fourth fret on the fifth string, and I'm playing that with my little finger to be nice and comfortable here. No use stretching out that much, but you could use your ring finger if that's comfortable for you. The key is to have fingers available behind where you're fretting this C sharp because we're going to use them. We're going to play the down beat, and then kind of like the rumbo, we're waiting on beat two and playing and three and. Waiting on beat four, playing and the four, and then starting back over. So we've got one. We do that three times, and then here's the fourth. All right, so there we kind of complete the idea and walk up the scale starting from our F sharp. Remember how I said that as we move through the progression, the riff will change a little bit. Listen to how this next little piece, it's a subtle change, but it answers that walk up so perfectly. There's the walk up. And there it was. We, we kind of fake like we're going to walk up, but instead we hit that open six string before going back to 
the root, the C sharp. Such a cool move. And we do it again before connecting us through the G sharp, that's the five chord, with these simple one note movements in these two bars, just basically targeting the G sharp and then the F sharp before rejoining our riff. Don't forget to check out the additional lesson materials on the lesson page that's linked in the description and you can sign up for the Tuesday Blues free weekly lesson delivered to your inbox. It's completely free and it comes with these additional lesson materials and you can sign up right over there. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Until then, practice smart and play on.